what's going on guys it has seriously been way too long since i've been out on my super adventure i think we're going on like five six weeks now not that i've been riding i just haven't been out on this so today is february 15 2018 just got home from work a little bit ago um, it's starting to cloud back up. It's calling for rain here in a little bit, but and it's actually calling for rain all day tomorrow. But the temperatures are in the upper 60s, almost 70 degrees right now, even though it's already like 530. And this is really the only day in the next few days that I get to ride because tomorrow it's calling for rain all day. And then Saturday, Noah and I are hopping in a truck with Luke Ross and we're headed down to Woodruff, South Carolina to go race uh, in the second AMA East hair scramble of the season. Uh, really looking forward to that and it's calling for pretty nice weather down there while it's calling for snow back here. So I wanted to kind of fill you guys in on what I did this past weekend. I had the bike up on the lift doing some routine maintenance to it. I went ahead and did the we'll call it the second uh, service interval or the, or the major service interval on the bike. I'm uh, about a thousand miles short of when it actually needed to be done but it was kind of crappy weather out and I wanted to make sure everything was ready to go here in the next month or so when the weather gets nice and we're ready to ride again. A few of the things I did, uh, put all new spark plugs in the bike. Don't worry guys, uh, despite what the uh, microfish says, they don't actually cost you $270. You should be able to get them for about, I don't know, 70, 80 bucks. They're not that bad. And I'll talk about that more about that in an upcoming back in the garage video. I'll also check the valves. You guys will be happy to know all the valves were well within spec. Um, I have a feeling even when we get up to the 30,000 mile mark, they'll probably still be within her 30, 35,000 mile mark whenever the next check is. They'll, they're probably going to be within spec there, though probably a little on the tight side. So everything checked out well there. There will be an entire series of back in the garage videos about checking the valves, changing the spark plugs, and some of the other things I did to the bike. I still have some stuff left to do to it. Um, still need to bleed the brakes, even though it doesn't call for that, I'm gonna do that anyway. I uh, still need to change the oil, uh, check the swing arm bearing. Uh, you know, there's, there's a few things that still need to be done. For the most part, uh, we got all the tough stuff done that requires you know to uh, take half the damn bike apart. Now, in addition to routine maintenance, we also did some upgrades to the bike. If you guys saw the um, uh, the, the mail time video, you saw that I got the Rottweiler Stage 3 SAS Delete Kit. That's been installed on the bike. If, if you want to say installed, we actually just took a bunch of emissions crap off of it. I uh, put a picture of it up on my uh, Instagram account the other day, and it got way more likes than I thought it would. So uh, anyway, all that stuff is gone. And we also did the Rottweiler... Uh, stage 3 air intake kit on the bike and that's why I'm out right now I wanted to test it out I did start the bike up the other night when I got done on Sunday uh, but I haven't had a chance to ride it this is actually the first time I've been out on the bike and that's probably why you guys clicked on the thumbnail because you wanted to know what I think about the airbox okay so as part of the stage 3 kit you get the fuel dongles which are supposed to help with the air fuel mixture at lower rpms when when the computer's got it leaned out uh, i went ahead and removed the o2 sensors i never really noticed a hesitation before but i can tell you this there was a hesitation because now at, at uh you know off on to about 20 percent throttle holy crap is it much more responsive than it was before now i don't know if some of that could also be due to the new intake on it i really have no idea because i didn't do these things in in steps i did them all at once but, you know, Rottweiler says that's what the uh, fuel dongles are supposed to do. And I'm going to tell you what, that was the first thing I noticed on the bike was when I was off throttle to on so much smoother than it's ever been before. And like I said, I really didn't have any complaints before. It was just that uh, <laughs> I, I didn't know any better. I didn't know it was supposed to be better than what it was. All right, so what about the air box? What do I think of it? Well, as you guys know, I was riding John's 1190 when I was down in Florida. He had the airbox on his bike, uh, but it, it wasn't necessarily an apples to apples comparison because his 1190 has a slightly different engine in it than my 1290 does, uh, not quite the horsepower. Um, so I really wanted to see what it would do on this bike. I'm going to be honest with you guys, you know, that Rottweiler airbox kit, stage three and delete and everything, it's not cheap. It's worth every 
Penny. Holy crap, does it wake this bike up. Now, listen, I'll be the first to admit, because I know a lot of you guys message me all the time, oh, when are you going to put an exhaust on? When are you going to do this? And I'm like, it's a 160 horsepower bike. What, you know, how much more power do you need? Well, I, I don't really have the answer to that, but uh, if, you're, if you're willing to drop, I don't even remember what I spent, probably around 700 bucks, do it, because you are not going to regret it. It has breathed new life into this engine. This thing, it, it just roars now. Now, if you're worried about the, the noise factor of the airbox, uh, it is louder than the stock airbox. However, um, if you're just rolling at like cruising speed, so we'll say between, I don't know, 3,000 and 4,500 RPM, something like that, you don't really notice it. But when you crack open the throttle, which, okay, that's not a cop. You hear it then. So I don't think it's really going to be much of an issue uh, rolling down the interstate or even doing some sport touring. Um, but if uh, you're going to be cracking open the throttle, oh, we ran that turn a little bit. If you're going to be cracking open the throttle, you're going to hear this thing because it's sucking in a ridiculous amount of air. It, it's crazy how, how much different the sound of the bike is now with this air box on. Now, some things I can't comment on at the moment, people are asking me about, uh, you know, will the fuel economy improve with the emission stuff deleted off of it? Will it improve with the intake on it? Uh, according to what some other folks have said, yes. Uh, but I think I'm going to see a drop in fuel mileage, at least in the short term, uh, because I'm not going to be able to stop cracking this throttle because it's so much fun. Uh, another question that came up was, what about... Um, what about the, do you think the engine's gonna run a little cooler? I really don't know. I mean, right now it's, it's, it's at 175 degrees, which, you know, I, it's a little bit cooler out. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not 80, 90 degrees outside. So it's really hard to tell. It's something I'll keep tabs on and, and report back. But it, right now, you know, that, that's kind of inconclusive. So I don't want this video to go on too long. I just kind of wanted to give you um, you know, a little bit of an update that we're going to have some back in the garage videos coming out really soon. They're all shot. I uh, just got to find time to edit them. I'm also in the middle of renovating my office at the moment, but they will be done soon and should be posted within at least a few days or a week or so uh, of this video going up, which is going up on Monday, the 19th, I believe. Additionally, I just wanted to give you an update and kind of my, my first impressions on the Rottweiler Airbox. I know I've only ridden it for maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, uh, but I'm impressed by it. Uh, I think this was definitely worthwhile. Again, I'll keep you updated on how things progress with it, how often, you know, the uh, the foam filter needs cleaned. Is there any other maintenance? Is any, you know, is it caused any problems along the way? I'll let you guys know as the videos roll out. But honestly, it's going to be a little while before I'm able to rack up any miles on the bike because we're still calling for some crap weather at least for the next few weeks. And I've still got some uh, bikes I need to take out for Ducati to, uh, to get some reviews done on. So when we do have nice days, or at least somewhat nice days, I'm going to be out riding some different bikes. Also, if you're wondering why I'm riding with my uh, shield up, it's because it's actually much darker out than it looks like right now. And uh, this dark smoke shield makes it kind of tough to see. But it's all right. I got the, uh, I got the windshield here, kind of protecting my eyes a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up tonight's video because the GoPros were not fully charged when I left the house and they could die at any moment. So, hope you guys enjoyed tonight's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up on the channel. If you have any additional questions that I may be able to answer about the, uh, that was my cousin just went by, about the Rottweiler Airbox, please let me know in the comments section below. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.